Hi everybody, Fox Nomad here and today I want to help you travel smarter by showing you what a $50 a night hotel room looks like here in Paro, Bhutan. So I'm staying at Hotel Olatong, which is the oldest hotel in Bhutan. It was basically built for the guests of the coronation of the fourth king in 1974 and this isn't your typical hotel setup. You do have the main building which has a reception and a restaurant but all the rooms here along the property are separated. So you've got the tent room here where I'm staying and you've got these different other rooms that have different designs and are in different sizes for different types of accommodation with different amenities. So as you walk through here, you get to see this beautiful architecture. There's a lot of open and green space. And if you're flying into Bhutan, you're coming through Paro because it has the only airport in the entire country. So chances are you're going to be staying in Paro as your entry point into Bhutan or maybe as you leave Bhutan and you're going to be looking for a place to stay. Now most of the hotels here are going to be higher up in the town. So the town is at a lower elevation and most of the hotels and homestays are going to be a little bit higher up so overlooking that town and the best way to get there is through taxi. But we'll get to the rest of Paro and Bhutan in a little bit. I want to show you around the Hotel Olathong. It has this rustic feel and a very different design than a lot of the other places to stay here. Now, it's called the tent room because it's designed like a tent. It's got this very thick tarp all around the room and you've got these high ceilings that come up at a point triangularly just like you would expect from a tent. Now, that gives it a different feeling. It is a little bit chilly in here. It's about the middle of March and you can really feel the temperature outside. You've got these two space heaters that they put up here, which does a pretty good job of warming up the room. But if you like it warmer, this might be just a little bit chilly for you. And in the bathroom, there are no heaters. So it is a little bit of a sort of a cold shock when you go in there. Now, personally, one thing I really like about this room is just how the space looks and how it's managed. So you've got your bed over here, which is a brand new mattress, very soft, very clean. And the staff, I'm going to say this multiple times throughout this video, the staff are incredibly helpful. They are so attentive and so helpful and so proactive in making your stay feel comfortable. Uh, but just looking around the room, you've got a couple of places to sit here. You've got a place for your laptop if you want. You've got a television and you've also got this little desk. So you can also set up maybe like a laptop or a camera or whatever you want. Just sort of spread out. You've got water bottles here, complimentary. You've got some tea. You've also got some coffee, instant coffee, if you want to make that in the room, along with the kettle. And as far as this main room goes, that's pretty much it. Now, there are a couple of quirks, like I said. You've got tarp on the outside of the tent room, but you've also got tarp covering up a screen. So it's very close to the outside. So in the summer, you would get a lot of air in here, a lot of air coming through, and you'd get these high ceilings giving some fresh air, keeping it cool. In the winter, though, you just got to make sure that you bring those tarp down to keep the warmth inside. But when you do that, you lose a lot of the daylight. So you're not getting a lot of daylight in this room. It's sort of very cozy and comfortable. And then when you open the front door and you see all the bright sunshine, you go outside. It's sort of, it's, it's just like a different world. Now, I didn't expect that the Wi-Fi would be great in these rooms because they're so far from the reception. And I didn't know how well or how much effort they would put into giving you good Wi-Fi in each room because they are so separate and so isolated. But I've really been surprised to see that I'm getting 40 megabits down and about 40 megabits up, which are really good internet speeds. And it's solid for making calls, for emails, for all that stuff. But you're in Bhutan. Do you really want to spend your time on the internet? I don't think so. But you probably are going to spend some time in the bathroom. And I got to say, it's pretty nice. It's separated here. so. It's separate from the rest of the tent room. So we've got this tarp in between that keeps the heat in here. Like I mentioned, there's no separate heating in here. It's cold. Uh, you can see that they've got the tarp over here covering the screen, but it's pretty chilly in here. So whatever the temperature is outside, it's going to be more or less that inside with a little bit of buffer there. So it's not quite as cold as it is outside, but it is chilly in here. Now inside the bathroom, a couple of nice things you've got a nice large sink area you've got your toilet now there's no light in front of the mirror which is a little bit annoying like when you're shaving or if you're putting on makeup it's not quite bright in front of the mirror it's one thing i wish they would add as a light there but you do have a couple of clean towels you've got 
soaps, shampoos, conditioners, all those things that you need. And of course, if something is required from the reception, the staff is gonna put you on their WhatsApp group and allow you to just message them. And they are extremely helpful and attentive. I couldn't figure out the shower at first and I didn't think the water was running. So they came in here, made me look like an idiot uh, because the shower is working. You do get hot water here. I've seen some of the reviews that say you can't find hot water or the hot water is difficult but you get a solid shower out of this. And there's a separate water heater just for the tent room here, and you can get a solid five, eight minute shower. And yeah, that's it. That's pretty much the bathroom. Now, there are a couple of quirks about this hotel, and I think the main one is that it's not really on a lot of booking sites. So when you're going to book this hotel, you're gonna have to email the property. Now, that's a little bit different. You're gonna have to email them and just write them, hey, I'm looking to stay you know, for one pe person, two people, or whatever it is, between these dates. And then you'll get a reply a day or two later. They'll send you the rate specific for those rooms where you plan on staying. So just keep that in mind. This isn't the kind of place you can book at the absolute last minute because there is that email transaction that has to happen. You can't just hop on a booking site and just grab this room like a couple hours before you show up. So you wanna do that probably at least a week before. For example, when I was booking this hotel, I didn't know that there was a festival happening this entire week. So they said the rooms are gonna be pretty scarce and pretty full. So I'm glad I wrote them with a little bit more time in advance than I would normally when I book a hotel. And then all the payment happens at the front desk. You do get a breakfast included with your stay and they also have a buffet at night for dinner. Now I'll say the dinner was okay. It was like so-so, wasn't the best, wasn't the worst. A decent amount of selection but if you're just arriving here from the airport and you need something to eat at night it's easy to grab because it's close but if you want something as well different then they can order that from a restaurant nearby and have it brought to you so it's basically like getting a food delivery at the hotel so there are a lot of food options outside of just the buffet here and the hotel can also arrange a pickup for you from the airport so they'll send a cab driver with your name on a little card they'll pick you up and you can pay that at the hotel or you can pay directly with the driver and like I mentioned, they also have a breakfast, so I want to show you that tomorrow morning. But first, let me give you a look around the hotel. Now, there is one thing about the hotel that you should know, which is common to most of the hotels here in Paro, is that they are, like I mentioned, above the city. So getting down, you can walk. It's about a 30-minute walk along these narrow streets that go downhill. Then walking back up, it's going to be a lot more intense. So most of the option is going to be to take a cab when you're going down into town and then take a cab to get back. Again, like I said, you can walk it, but there's not a real it's a lot of space on that road to walk. And whew, being higher up in these mountains, you can really sort of feel the, the air thinness and take some time to get used to that. Uh, but also it's a pretty steep incline going up. So just keep that in mind. If you're going to be going out, it's going to be a taxi ride down and up but the hotel can call a cab for you and take you around where you need, so it's not very difficult, just something to keep in mind. Good morning. All right, so the breakfast is in Stellar, although it is a breakfast that comes included with the hotel, which is always kind of a bonus, even if the breakfast isn't great. I think the breakfast here is just sort of unusual in terms of what you get. So you get these beans and corn in this tomato sauce, so it's sort of like a British beans in the morning omelet and then just like a random pastry with some strawberry jam in it. So there you have it, that's a look at the Hotel Olatong here in Paro, Bhutan. Now, is it worth your $50 a night? I'd say yes, I think the service, I have to say, is hands down absolutely excellent. The staff are checking on you constantly, they'll message you, they'll set you up on WhatsApp and just check in on you, give you information about the things you have planned. Uh, my trip has been changed, sort of, you know, my itinerary has changed at the last minute due to weather and all kinds of things that were out of my control and they've been very accommodating and helpful giving me advice on what to see setting up drivers so i can't say enough about the good service here the rooms are also very comfortable and you feel like you're in nature and you are in nature but having the rooms separated like this and not all in one you know big apartment building hotel style just makes it feel a little bit more peaceful a little bit more rugged a little bit more like you are out in nature and experiencing the mountains of bhutan so if i were going to rate this hotel i'd say the service is top notch i'd say the location is good it's not in town so you do need to take a taxi down into the city center and then come back up from paro and that's about 300 nagoltrum which is about three and a half dollars for a one-way cab to get down and to get back up although it's a very quick drive it's about 10 or 15 minutes i'd say the breakfast and the food here is 
so-so, it's okay, but you do get breakfast. Like I said, it's always a bonus to get breakfast with your hotel. It's at least some kind of food if you're in a rush that you can get before you go out for your day. And the rooms are very comfortable, unique, and you're gonna enjoy your time here, I think. So there you go. That's a look at the Hotel Alatong. Thanks very much for watching. If you have any questions about this hotel or staying here in Bhutan, feel free to let me know down in the comments below. And while you're down there, hit the like and subscribe buttons. I'll have new videos for you every week, and I'll see you in the next video.